Hey everybody, Dr. Dave Marquis here, and I wanted to share with you some thoughts on a test dye that I've seen to cause some problems in some of my patients, and just bring your awareness of that in case you have this test recommended for you. And that's the dye called gadolinium. Now, gadolinium is a non-radioactive heavy metal that's commonly used in imaging procedures. I love the imaging procedures. I, I've used MRIs and CTs and x-rays for my entire career. So for over 30 years, I've been using imaging and I'll continue to do so because it's a very, very useful tool. I like MRIs because there's no radiation involved. It's uh, electromagnetic energy. The MRI allows you to really, in a, a definitive way, start to evaluate soft tissues better than some of the hard tissues in the body. So you can look at the brain. You can look at the spinal cord and the nervous system. You can look at muscles like the heart. Uh, you can look at organs. Uh, it, it's a great tool for differentiation of changes in our soft tissues. Having said that, radiological dyes like gadolinium have been useful for enhancing that image so that you can differentiate tissues even better. So it, it takes a high definition image and makes it super high definition. And that sounds great, right? Excepting for those individuals that can't process gadolinium or when that gadolinium for other reasons creates an inflammatory process in that individual and it can be life-changing. And that's what I wanted to share with you because it doesn't happen to everyone, but there is an unknown risk for everyone going into that procedure. Knowing some things about yourself before you agree to have a dye put in, I, I would consider a high priority because I've seen multiple lives change in a permanent way and not for the better after they've been exposed to this. Some of the things that an individual can experience is permanent changes in their cognitive state. And I've, I've seen that firsthand where an individual starts to um, experience brain fog or symptoms that would be consistent with someone experiencing um, mild to moderate cognitive impairment or dementia. And you see that almost in a night to day fashion when an individual went in to evaluate something within the brain and then they come out and now they're worse off in terms of their cognitive state. Although you do have the definitive image, but at what cost? Knowing that an individual might have an adverse response initiates a need to determine the health of that individual because some of the, the risk factors that can predispose someone to that is already being in an inflamed state, already having soft tissue damage in the body, having poor detoxification processes. Your detoxification processes to allow for gadolinium to be excreted from the body really has a lot to do with your kidney health and not just the kidneys, but your whole lymphatic chain. And what they're understanding now is that, so gadolinium is bound to a chelating agent when it's put into the body. And sometimes it will disassociate from that chelating agent. And because it's a nanoparticle, it'll get stuck in your tissues. And let's say you're going in for repeat images and they're using gadolinium multiple times. Now this gadolinium can actually build up in your tissues and it can become the cause of many negative responses in the body. Things that become permanently pro-inflammatory because your body can no longer access or eliminate these nanoparticles because they literally become part of your cellular matter. If that happens to an individual, there are ways that you can try to mitigate or remove some of the gadolinium and I would encourage people to know about that. But here's another concept along that same train of thought. If you absolutely have to have the image, do everything that you can to reduce your inflammation before going in and have the things in the body that would allow you to bind and remove this gadolinium as fast as possible so it reduces the probability of it when it disassociates getting stuck in your body creating symptoms later on. Because sometimes people are experiencing gadolinium poisoning symptoms months to years later. It's not always happening right at the moment. And that's something that you need to be aware of. So what are some of the things that you could do to bind and eliminate this heavy metal from the body? Well, N-acetylcysteine is one of my favorites. Fulvic acid, humic acid, zeolite, activated charcoal. All of these things can bind and remove. Pectisol, which is a citrus pectin that crosses the blood-brain barrier. Each of the things that I just mentioned have a binding affinity to heavy metals and they can literally bind it so that the body can start to remove it from your system. 
That's not a sure bet, but it will help to reduce the burden. So I think the number one thing that you can do before accepting the risk of putting a dye into the body is know your state of health. If you're in an inflamed state or you already have tissue damage, I would request to have a different form of imaging done and there's not a lot of options in that realm where you're trying to do a contrast dye. So sometimes it's just asking the physician to evaluate you in another way rather than taking the risk of worsening your situation from the dye. And physicians should be able to work through that process with you. But if you're gonna go ahead and do it and receive the dye, improve your state of health as best you can. Lower your inflammatory load, with some of the things that we've talked about previously, like utilizing fibrenza to reduce uh, vascular inflammation, utilizing glutathione, and then those other things that I just mentioned, the rare earth minerals, the activated charcoal, the pectisol, use those things so that you can keep your system as clean as possible. Make sure that you're well hydrated and you stay well hydrated. People whose kidneys are already suffering, they're not gonna be good individuals to filter anything out, let alone a new heavy metal that they put into the body. I just wanted to raise awareness that these dyes that can give us really good images aren't necessarily the best choice for every individual and make the best choice for you when you go into getting imaging done and realize that imaging can produce some wonderful results and help you to understand things about your body, but every procedure we do comes with its own inherent risk and you need to know that before you go into it. I hope that's helpful information and I desire for all of you to be well.